Hey, what's going on guys? It's Salvaje and uh, in this video, I'm bringing you guys 200 Fortnite Save the World tips updated and revised for late 2019 and 2020. That's right, because this video is my previous two 100 tip videos combined in one, but there's a lot of tips that I have changed or updated because of course, Save the World has evolved and changed as a game. If this video reaches 50 video likes, I'm going to make another 100 tip video with 100 new tips so if you guys want to see that of course feel free to hit that like button and uh if you want more quality save the world content feel free to hit that subscribe button as well number one the higher the impact on your weapon the more the husks are going to flinch and the longer they're going to take to reach their destination number two weapons in fortnite save the world break you cannot repair them make sure that you guys are getting the materials necessary to craft these weapons number three make sure that you have two-factor authentication turned on so that you get a super troll stash llama long story short it's a llama that can give you a lot of save the world goodies Number four, husks have this thing called an impact counter. In other words, basically a counter that makes them uh, invulnerable to traps like the wall launcher and the floor launcher. Long story short, the more you shoot husks, the more you lower their impact counter and it's gonna get to a point where they become vulnerable to uh, traps like the floor launcher and the wall launcher. Tip number five, in repair the shelter modules are actually closer to the shelter the farther away you get from the shelter the more spaced out the modules are going to be number six repair the shelter modules are usually within a 0 to 11 tile range number seven when playing repair the shelter build about three stories high so that you can find modules easier number eight make sure that you look closely and repair the shelter because sometimes modules are very sneaky and they're literally right in front of your face Number nine, do not build inverted pyramids. Instead, build floors with two dots of edit, like you guys are seeing in the gameplay example. Long story short, inverted pyramids basically limit mobility around the objective when it comes down to getting into the objective point. Number nine, always build a pyramid build when it comes down to atlas missions it's one of the best builds and gives you a lot of mobility and options number 11 these fragments decrease the cooldown of your teddy and shock tower make sure that you're picking them up when you're playing an outlander number 12 maximize your electrified floors as a constructor by building a lot of floors around your base number 13 14 and 15 maximize your teddy shock tower as well as of course your drone by dropping it where the enemies spawn. Number 16, really high in the air or wanna jump down and not take any fall damage, place a bouncer on the floor and you're not gonna be taking fall damage. Number 17, build stairs on your walls so that smashers don't charge your walls. Number 18, build half floors so that smashers also don't charge up your walls number 19 make sure that you use brick when moving around the world like that you save wood and metal for important things like crafting ammo number 20 you can actually use the minigun to break loot llamas faster number 21 use the rosy turrets to break llamas faster number 22 click on the collection book icon on the schematic section for example and basically when you click on the collection book icon it tells you that all you know it tells you all of the things that you can basically put in the collection book number 23 husky husks actually do more damage to your fort so make sure that you're taking them out as soon as you can in retrieve the data this is tip number 24 by the way make sure that you guys look straight up so that you guys can spot the balloon and the landing site as fast as possible Number 25, don't overbuild too much in Retrieve the Data. A simple one by one build can do wonders and it also gives you a lot of possibilities for traps, etc, etc. Number 26, if you're trying to speedrun destroy the encampment missions, make sure that you and all of your friends have outlanders. Number 27, this is more of an advanced tip. If you want to passively farm in Fortnite Save the World, make sure that you're playing Destroy the Encampment missions because every single encampment basically gives you the basic materials that you need in Fortnite Save the World. And if you play Destroy the Encampments for a pretty decent amount of time, eventually you're going to have a pretty nice chunk of ammo and of course basic materials like wood, brick, and of course other things like quartz and the ore of the destination that you are at. Number 28, pick up the building tower on tough 4 player missions since it increases the building speed as well as the repair speed so that you guys can build and repair things faster on those tough missions. 
Number 29. Make sure that when you start playing Fortnite Save the World that you farm up on a lot of nuts and bolts because you're definitely going to need them to of course have a lot of ammo. Number 30, make sure that you guys use Sniper Defenders. They are definitely going to help you out on 4-player missions when it comes down to taking down those pesky mist monsters. Number 31, play Destroy the Encampments if you want to get fast gold. Number 32, you can actually use the Face Shift ability and then wait a couple of seconds because after you use the Face Shift ability, you get a little bit of a speed boost. Like that, you basically aren't spamming Face Shift and not taking... Uh, use of the speed boost. Number 33, the best farming outlander in the game is Archaeologist. So if you want a lot of a single type of material like wood, metal, or brick, or other crafty materials, you definitely want to get your hands on Archaeologist. Number 34, if you want to do massive amounts of damage with a soldier, make sure that you throw a grenade and you use your shockwave ability at the same time. Number 35, never dismantle something unless it's in the collection book. Number 36, make sure that you save up some materials like wood, metal, and brick in your storage like that just in case you ever need those, you don't have to farm for them. Number 37, if you destroy gnomes, there's a small chance that you're gonna get an active power cell from them. Number 38, and I actually didn't know this when I got into Candy Valley, but destroying rubber duckies is actually going to give you some duct tape. Number 39, if you, you can actually use phase shift to escape from a lot of husk if they're ganging up on you. Number 40, you can actually use phase shift to also go through a smasher charge and take little to no damage. Number 41, if your weapon has a 10% base critical hit rating and doesn't have 50 plus bullets in the magazine by default, you should not go for a critical rating build. And of course, I did do a separate video on my quick tips playlist talking about critical rating and overall damage build. So check out the quick tips playlist if you guys are interested on critical rating versus overall damage builds. Number 42, if a weapon has 3.0 reload time and above, it definitely means that it needs a reload speed perk, unless of course it's an SMG. Number 43, the snare perk, it's actually better on assault rifles because it's going to slow down husk and therefore it means that you're going to be inflicting more damage to them. Number 44, the affliction perk is actually very good on snipers because it's usually going to finish off your targets. Number 45, make sure that you're putting your upgrade points on the pickaxe as fast as possible when you get to a new destination like Canny Valley for example like that you can break things faster and just farm materials faster. Number 46, make sure that you have the turret. It is one of the must have, must run gadgets in Fortnite Save the World. Number 47, make sure that you guys have the Adrenaline Rush gadget as well. It is also one of the best and definitely a must have gadget when it comes down to Candy Valley and above. Number 48, the airstrike is actually a very good gadget to have when you're playing Destroy the Encampments. Number 49, the slow field is actually a great gadget for destroy the encampments as well because it gives you the ability to destroy husk extremely quickly. Number 50, the slow field gadget is very good for mini boss missions, specifically the four player mini boss missions because it slows down the mini boss drastically and therefore gives your team sort of like an opportunity to of course dish out massive damage to the mini boss. Number 51, if you want to have a huge amount of materials for a long time as a constructor, run a constructor with recycle and run the supply drop gadget as well. Number 52, the banner gadget is actually very helpful on four player missions, specifically if it has the respawning ability. In other words, the ability that lets you respawn where you place your banner. Number 53, the mine is actually a terrible gadget. Do not run it at all whatsoever. I want to give a tip for every gadget, but honestly, that's the best tip for the mine. It's really bad. Um, tip number 54, make sure that you use the teleporter gadget to get to the high ground if you have, of course, built a two-story building. Number 55, set up a teleporter near an enemy spawn. And of course, set the other teleporter close to you and throw an RPG rocket and watch the husk basically explode when they go past your teleporter. And of course, keep in mind, you definitely need one of the upgrades for the teleporter to be able to do this. Number 56, make sure that you prioritize building health over repair speed as you are, of course, putting skill points into, you know, those two nodes. Number 57, make sure that you guys activate these speed towers. I believe they're called bylons. I don't know. Let me know in the comment sections what they're called because I actually forgot. But make sure that you guys activate these speed towers. They're very helpful because it basically increases the movement speed of every single person in the team, especially constructors, because constructors actually move slower compared to other people like ninjas and outlanders, of course. 
number 58 you can actually use bull rush on specific epic bosses to basically get them farther away from the uh you know the, the their destination number 59 make sure that you spend your research points sort of evenly but for the most part make sure that you're focusing on offense and tech because those are the two most important ones tip number 60 the llamas that have the best values are super people llamas so if you're gonna buy llamas make sure that you buy super people llamas again they have the best value number 61 make sure that your survivors are matching their personalities with their lead survivors so that you can increase your home base power a little bit quicker Tip number 62, make sure that your survivors also have a matching set bonus like that. Of course, you get an extra bonus like extra health, extra shield, etc, etc. Tip number 63, make sure that you're in a safe spot when using the going commando ability because you cannot heal while using that ability. Tip number 64, and this is for all of you constructor mains out there. Don't put your base just on top of an atlas. Make sure that you put your base in a position where it covers as many tiles as possible. So if you're doing a three atlas mission, put your base in a position that but it, it can potentially cover all three atlases as you guys are seeing in the gameplay example. Tip number 65, there are a lot of ability based heroes in Fortnite Save the World. So make sure that you guys are always paying attention to your ability cooldown so that you guys can maximize your time with that hero. Tip number 66, make sure that you line up a lot of husk when you're about to use the dragon slash ability with of course a ninja. Tip number 67, the throwing stars ability actually pierces through multiple husks. So when you activate the throwing stars ability, make sure that you are lined up and looking at a lot of husks. Tip number 68, the pure drop of rain resource is very, very valuable, specifically when you're first starting out in save the world. So make sure that you always have a lot of rain with you. Tip number 69, make sure that when you first start out in save the world you don't level every single little thing that you get because you do want to save up your experience when you get something like a legendary hero for example tip number 70 make sure that you guys are using a bruiser constructor specifically if you're in a mission where you know a lot of husks are going to be coming together and you might need a little bit of help Tip number 71, the bigger the crosshair on the shotgun, the lesser the range. The shorter the crosshair on the shotgun, the uh, more range the shotgun has. Tip number 72, when using a melee weapon like a sword for example, make sure that you walk backwards as you're hitting the husk so that their melee doesn't hit you. Tip number 73, wall darts actually can travel up to 3 tiles long. Tip number 74, wall darts can actually shoot through stairs. Tip number 75, the ceiling drop trap can be placed up to three stories high and I definitely recommend you guys do this because sometimes ceiling drop traps, when you place them at one tile long, you know, they can sort of lower the visibility. Anyways, tip number 76, the ceiling electric trap actually goes through stairs as you guys are seeing in the gameplay example. Tip number 77, the AOE ceiling field trap actually has a three tile range. So even if the husk aren't walking under it, they're still going to get hit. Tip number 78, putting double reload speed on a gas trap will basically make it fire forever. And the reason for this is, is because gas traps automatically reload as soon as they activate. Tip number 79, wooden floor spike actually prevents the small husk from actually leaping towards you. Tip number 80, make sure that you guys put stairs above a floor launcher so that you guys send the husk flying back. Tip number 81, make sure that you guys are using wall launchers in your trap tunnel so that the husk are trapped in your trap tunnels for longer and they take more trap damage. Tip number 82, when it comes down to husk movement, they always like to go with the path of least resistance. Tip number 83, when funneling the husk into a tunnel, make sure that you're placing a staircase basically uh, behind your wall like that the husk don't break your wall. Tip number 84, you can actually make a 2x2 two two trap tunnel and then you can put a wall launcher that sends them into a floor launcher and then that floor launcher basically sends them back therefore creating an infinite loop trap tunnel and the gameplay example should give you guys an example of that of course. Number 85, if you guys want to make fast gold, another way to do it is to always increase the difficulty of the mission by one because of course the gold will stack up as you know the more missions you do 
Uh, tip number 86, shout out to the boys at Storm Shield 1. Go to the website Storm Shield 1 so you can never miss out on a V-Buck mission. Number 87, place a floor launcher on the floor so people don't edit you out. A lot of players in Save the World sometimes like to edit you out when you're on top of a repair the shelter for example. So by placing a floor launcher, they basically can't edit you into the bottom uh, you know, of the shelter. Tip number 88, you can actually re-roll your daily missions once a day. Tip number 89, the fastest way to do Canny Valley Act 2 and Act 3 missions is to do destroy the encampments. Tip number 90, make sure that you guys are lining yourself up against multiple husk when using a noble launcher so that you can get as many husk as possible with the noble launcher. And if you don't have a noble launcher, don't worry, Epic said that eventually event weapons and items are going to become part of the base game. Anyways, tip number 91, always have traps crafted in your backpack because you never know when you're going to need them. Tip number 92, if you don't know how to use your people, basically transform them into blue survivors so that you can get free training manuals. Tip number 93, farm hero, schematic, and survivor XP very quickly by doing 4 time atlas, 4 player missions. Tip number 94, make sure that you guys are running expeditions with uh, these cache boxes so that you guys can get free materials and ore. Tip number 95, if you run expeditions with the red toolbox, you can actually get a lot of nuts and bolts and a lot of herbs. Tip number 96, if you guys want to farm fibrous herbs as fast as possible, go to a grassland or forest area. Tip number 97, the fastest way to farm nuts and bolts is to go to a city. Tip number 98, if you want to farm Sunbeam and other level 100 materials, go to a level 100 storm chest or a level 100 area. Tip number 99, the fastest and best way to farm materials, specifically ores in Save the World, I would probably say that it's just by doing storm chest. Tip number 100, make sure that you guys uh, do the uh, build the radar towers that have the quartz crystal because they will give you the specific ore of that destination Okay, so now we move on forward to my second 100 tip video with of course updated tips like for example tip number one and two because Tip number one and two from my second 100 tip video are outdated by now. So tip number one, make sure that when you guys first start out in Fortnite Save the World, you put as many heroes into your loadout as possible, even if the heroes don't benefit your loadout. And basically the reason why you want to do this is because like that, your character has in increased stats and health, etc, etc. Which leads me to tip number two. If you can, as a beginner player, do make sure that you put as many heroes in your loadouts that are going to help your main hero. For example, don't put a constructor on a ninja class unless of course that's the only option that you've got. Tip number three for my beginner players out there, if you hold down the grenade button when you're playing a soldier, you can actually see where your grenade is going. That leads me forward to tip number four. If you want your grenade to go a little bit further, make sure that you jump uh, after you are of course about to throw the grenade. Tip number five, you can actually jump and use the shockwave to of course counter the annoying refrigerator husk. Tip number six, if you're a high power level in a low power level mission, don't reinforce the base as much because chances are that you're going to be deleting everything that stands in your way. Tip number seven, here's an advanced tip. The more survivors you rescue on a mission, the more people you're going to get in the reward screen. So if you want to get people as fast as possible, make sure that you're saving as many survivors as possible throughout your mission. Tip number eight, if you want to find the arcade machine in city areas, make sure that you're checking the underground of the city zones. Now let's talk about elemental husk, and that leads me forward to tip number nine. Fire husk will do more damage to wooden structures. Tip number 10, water husk will do more damage to brick structures. 11, nature husk do more damage to metal structures. Tip number 12, fire husk will actually damage you over time if they hit you. Tip number 13, water husk will actually slow you down if they hit you, of course, with their melee. And tip number 14, if a nature husk hits you, they are, of course, going to be draining your energy. Tip number 15, if you jump as soon as you're about to get on a directional pad, you actually tend to go farther. Tip number 16, you take no fall damage if you use a directional pad. Tip number 17, if you don't want to wait 12 seconds to go back to home base, you can put leave match as the match is about to end. And when you get to the victory score screen, you put confirm and then you will leave the match. You won't have to 
to wait the 12 seconds and you're still going to be of course getting your rewards tip number 18 you can actually use anti-materials charge against basic husk and it is really effective even at the lower levels of play so beginner players make sure that you're doing that Tip number 19 and 20, you can use your teddy as well as your shock tower as a shield for cover. Tip number 21, you can place wall lights on walls with a hole in the center. Tip number 22, wall lights will actually stun enemies through staircases. Tip number 23, you can hit a refrigerator husk with anti-materials charge as an outlander and then just shoot him so you don't have to deal with, of course, his shield. Tip number 24, weapons like the obliterator and the ghost pistol can actually shoot through the refrigerator husk's shield. Tip number 25, make sure that you give your sniper defender an obliterator and then wall them up with four walls and a roof because the obliterator and the neon sniper can actually shoot through walls specifically of course if you're using it with a defender and if you don't have the obliterator it's okay eventually it will become part of the base game so you don't have to worry about it tip number 26 give your rifle defender the candy corn lmg for free healing tip number 27 make sure that you hold edit on a rooftop so that other players cannot edit you down if you're in a mission Tip number 28, fragments actually make it so that you don't have to waste energy when throwing down a teddy or a shock tower. Tip number 29, you can actually use the hoverboard on directional paths to go even farther. Tip number 30, make sure that you save ammo by building a loadout with different ammo types, like for example a loadout with shotgun, light bullets, and uh, medium bullets for example. Tip number 31, always build a one by one when it comes down to floating atlases, and we're going to talk about why on an upcoming tip. Tip number 32, you don't really need to place a rooftop on floating atlases that are in Planker Town and midway through Canny Valley. That leads me forward to tip number 33 though. You definitely want to be placing rooftops on uh, floating atlases in Endgame, Candy Valley and above, so in other words Twine Peaks as well. Tip number 34, make sure that you place floors inside of your pyramid build for extra protection. Tip number 35, if you build open walls in a floating atlas, the husk aren't actually going to focus on the floating atlases. Tip number 36, if you press Z on your survivor squads, the game is going to sort of tell you which survivors match the lead survivor's personality for that specific squad. Tip number 37, press the sword button as you're sending heroes on expedition so the game tells you what are the higher power level heroes. Tip number 38, visit abandoned shelters in the Save the World map and abandoned shelters are going to tell you where that survivor is at on the map. It's going to give you the location and everything. Tip number 39, find out the score of your teammates by going to the objectives menu. Tip number 40, if you actually do play with others mission, you're going to be getting 20% extra XP. Tip number 41, you can interact with the repair the shelter module with a side window. Tip number 42, if you jump really high uh, from the air with a soldier and you use shockwave as you're about to land, you actually take no fall damage. Tip number 43, don't use your pickaxe to destroy structures, just use the obliterator. Tip number 44, if you click on the more tab and then you put change tile size, you can change the tile size of your heroes or schematics. Tip number 45, if you want to find out what are things that can go in the collection book, click on the more section and then click on the show collection book thingies, uh, you know, node. Tip number 46, if you click on more and then you click on mark all as seen, you can actually mark everything new that you have gotten from a llama, for example. Uh, tip number 47, make sure that you use the sword feature to find things faster on your hero and schematic section. Tip number 48, you can actually use the teleporter gadget to teleport things like teddies and shock towers. Tip number 49, you can also use the teleporter to teleport things like grenades, ninja stars, and also rockets. Tip number 50, you can change the course of your airstrike bombs by selecting the airstrike gadget and then just pressing right click. Tip number uh, 51, make sure that you drop turrets in the enemy spawn, like that when the turrets explode, you can actually of course damage husk with the turret explosion. Uh, tip number 52, make sure that you use the slow field and mix it up with the airstrike so that you guys can get a lot of guaranteed targets. Tip number 53, you can tell that a lead survivor belongs on a specific squad if his uh, squad logo is shining. Tip number 54, event items in the item shop last an entire battle royale season for the most part. Tip number 55, weekly items only last one week. So if you see a weekly item that you like, make sure that you get it because chances are in a week it's going to be gone. Tip number 56, make sure that you unlock survivor squad slots by completing your storm shield defenses. Tip number 57, you can cancel out a smasher charge by using bull rush towards it. Tip number 58, make sure that you're opening as many event llamas as possible so you can get easy training manuals. Tip number 59, this number might not be fully correct, but from my understanding, physical weapons do 
67% of their total damage against elemental husk. So definitely make sure that you're using energy weapons if you're going against a lot of elemental husk. Uh, tip number 60, make sure that you use the right heroes for the right activities. For example, don't use Mega Base Kyle on a Destroy the Encampment mission because Mega Base Kyle doesn't have a lot of crazy offensive capabilities like a soldier, for example. Uh, tip number 62, make sure that you turn on the toggle to interact option in the menu, like that you don't have to hold down E or F to basically activate a storm chest, for example. Tip number 63, before dismantling an item, make sure that it is in the collection book. Tip number 64, before placing something in the collection book, make sure that you absolutely aren't going to use it because it takes 20 V-Bucks to unslot things from the collection book. Tip number 65, on higher level missions, always build final tunnel so that the husks are going to you in a predictable pattern. Tip number 66, this is for newer players, do not stand inside of trap tunnels because then propanes are going to throw their propane tanks at you and you're going to blow up the trap tunnel. Tip number 67, do not throw rockets inside of trap tunnels if there's a lot of propane tanks spawning. Tip number 68, the taller the encampment, the more husks are going to spawn. Tip number 69, make sure that you shoot propane tanks from far away so that they don't destroy your precious trap tunnels. Tip number 70, if there's a propane tank on the floor, wait for a lot of husks to get around it so that you can shoot the propane tank and cause an easy area of effect explosion tip number 71 and this is going to be a bit of a plug here but make sure that you guys check out my fortnite save the world beginner's guide playlist i'm always updating that playlist with every single video that a beginner save the world player needs to watch so that he understands every single aspect of the game Tip number 72, make sure that you're using the note feature in Fortnite Save the World to basically spot where good loot is for your teammates. Tip number 73, if you see a high priority target like a smasher for example in Fortnite Save the World, make sure that you use the spot feature like that your teammates are aware of that high priority target. Tip number 74, make sure that you use the trap equipper to basically equip traps easier. Tip number 75, the daily login bonus in Fortnite Save the World does not reset, okay guys? So if you miss a day of logging in and save the world, it's okay, you're still gonna be getting your rewards. Tip number 76, if you are scouting for Blue Glow, make sure that you open up your map like that you see where the nearest Blue Glow is at. Tip number 77, if you want to type something really quickly but don't actually want to type it in chat, just use the little team chat wheel that the game gives you. Tip number 78, you can actually pull out the blueprint to sort of edit things from farther away. Tip number 79, you can actually use Shockwave to sort of go through a Smasher charge and like that the Smasher doesn't throw you like really, really high in the air. Uh, tip number 80, make sure that you are using your people in Fortnite Save the World by, of course, uh, doing a lot of expeditions. And if you want a really quick, straight to the point expeditions guide that is going to tell you how to never farm again in Fortnite Save the World, check out my quick tips playlist for a six minute that for a six minute video. I mean, that just explains expeditions in a really good, fast, and effective way. Tip number 81, you can use the bull rush ability to cancel a taker charging at you. Uh, tip number 82, place down a decoy if you're surrounded by Hus so that you can get yourself in a better position. Tip number 83, you can actually place down a decoy so that, like that the propane Hus throw their propane tanks at your decoy instead of you. Tip number 84, your war cry ability will affect your teammates if you of course use it through a wall. Tip number 85, make sure that you throw two keep out grenades in the enemy spawn for massive AoE damage as the husks are spawning. Keep out grenades are grenades that Master Grenadier Ramirez has, by the way. It's basically the grenades that cause like an energy field to be on the ground. Tip number 86, remember you can always shoot down lava skulls from the sky. Tip number 87, make sure that you know about target priority and save the world. And knowing about target priority and save the world means that you always take out blasters first no matter what. Tip number 88, energy weapons will do a total of 75% of their damage to elemental husk. Tip number 89, against fire husk, you always want to be using water weapons to do 100% of the weapon's damage. Tip number 90, against water husk, make sure that you're using nature weapons. Tip number 91, against nature husk, make sure that you're using fire weapons. Tip number 92, headshots are actually very important in Fortnite Save the World, so make sure that you're going for them. Tip number 93, make sure that you avoid killing husk. Uh, that are just randomly in the world because it's just gonna waste your weapons durability tip number 94 You can easily destroy structures with the bowler launcher and if you don't have the bowler launcher Eventually it will be a part of the base game. So don't worry about it tip number 95 Make sure that you place as many green and blue stuff in your collection book when you first start playing Fortnite save the world for some really easy rewards 
Tip number 96, you can actually destroy structures really easily with the going commando ability. Tip number 97, if you are going against a refrigerator husk, you can actually throw the shock tower or the teddy behind them to easily destroy them. Tip number 98, if the storm chest isn't in the borders of the map, that means the storm, the storm chest is somewhere in the center of the map. Tip number 99, make sure that you're uh, maximizing your hammer melee weapons that have the lunge attack. For example, take out enemies on one side and instead of running to the other side of enemies, just use the lunge attack to of course prioritize other enemies. And tip number 100, make sure that you use your environment as cover. And this might sound like a really basic tip, but a lot of the reasons why a lot of players sometimes get downed in Fortnite Save the World is because they don't build and they're not using their environment as cover. You always want to sort of manipulate where the husks are going by of course sort of using the environment uh, to your advantage. And that is pretty much it my friends. Those are 200 tips for Fortnite Save the World. If we reach 50 video likes, I will be dropping another 100 tip video for Fortnite Save the World. If you're interested on quality Save the World content, feel free to hit that subscribe button and I will be seeing y'all on the next one. Thank you very much for watching and consider subscribing. Peace. Thank you.